Good to be with you again. I'm sure everyone has seen on TV and the news uh, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, visiting Canada to seek reconciliation with the uh, native peoples because of the evil that was perpetrated many years ago by the government uh, taking the children of indigenous peoples and putting them to special schools, some of which were uh, operated by Catholic religious orders. And there was much abuse, and unfortunately, those children grew up without their families. Reconciliation, so important to the church. That's what we're all about. And God knows in our society we see so many examples of broken relationships within families, such a high rate of divorce. Husbands and wives coming to a point where they just can't stand living together. Parents and children with misunderstandings. People at times not being able to speak anymore to someone who was a friend, a member of the family. Even sometimes we've encountered it where it goes until the person's on their deathbed before there's reconciliation. And we see it in society. So often people, groups of people, classes of people set against each other. And we sense our society is being torn apart, that we need a reconciliation. And yes, reconciliation is perhaps difficult because it takes both parties to make some movement from what each thinks is right, the correct way of doing things or saying things or whatever. Yes, reconciliation is what our faith is all about. Our God sending his beloved son to suffer and die on the cross for us, to bring us reconciliation. St. Paul says it so simply in his second letter to the Corinthians. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, that is, in Christ God, was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us, so we are ambassadors for Christ, ambassadors of reconciliation. Certainly the scriptures give us such beautiful examples of reconciliation. I, I suppose the most powerful one is that in the, the Gospel of Luke, the story of the prodigal son, who asked for his inheritance and went off and wasted it and came back repentant, eager to even be treated just like one of the slaves of his master, his father. And the father running out to see him as soon as he caught sight of him coming up the road in that story of Jesus, running out to show him mercy, welcome him home, reestablish the bonds of love between father and son. Yes, that's the supreme example of reconciliation. And what Jesus says, his whole life is all about. And as Paul says, you know, we are charged as ambassadors of Christ to bring that reconciliation to others, to our society even. I was struck by some words of Thomas Merton, the great American Trappist writer and thinker. He said, God has left sin in the world in order that there may be forgiveness. Not only the secret forgiveness by which he himself cleanses our souls, but the manifest forgiveness by which we have mercy on one another, and so give expression to the fact that he is living by his mercy 
in our own hearts. Ambassadors of Christ, bringing that mercy to other people. God knows our world today, our society, needs reconciliation, needs people willing to put aside their profound convictions and respect one another, people willing to break through the barriers, even to grant forgiveness. Yes, it's not easy to forgive, but with God's help, knowing it's God's work, we can do it. God bless you and your loved ones.